This little video is a, an instructional video that we've put together as part of the National Waterbug Blitz to help you take better macro photographs. And the reason we want you to take better macro photographs is because we have to look at them. So what we're going to try and do is to get you chaps skilled up in how to take macro photos with simply your existing phone. If you have a snazzy new phone that has, you know, 4K abilities and those sorts of things, chances are it'll probably do it without you. But if you do have a slightly older phone, there are a bunch of tricks that you can employ that will make you get better, sharper, um, and sort of more engaging photographs of the freshwater macroinvertebrates that form such an integral part of the National Water Bank Blitz. The two phones that we'll be using for demonstration purposes are an old iPhone 5S, which is the uh, probably the oldest phone currently in the Apple uh, suite that you can get the most up-to-date um, operating system on. Um, it's also probably the one of the phones that you're most likely to have if you're one of those people that doesn't need to get the most recent phone all the time. So it's, it's a quite a common phone in the outside landscape. And the other phone that we're working on is an Android um, phone and this is a Nokia One and we've chosen that because it's got quite um, a small set of CPUs and stuff on it so it's probably one of the the more undergunned um, examples of a telephone that you might want to use um, this on. So, you know, if you can take a photo with this or a photo with this, chances are whatever you have, um, you can take a slightly better photo with. What I've got here is uh, a tray of bugs, which form part of a, a sample that we've taken from the creek nearby. Um, and I've, I've taken a subset of those beasties out and I've popped them in an ice cube tray here, as you would do if you were doing a, an assessment with the National Water Bug Blitz. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to use this sort of assortment of beasties here to demonstrate um, how best to take photographs with your camera. Um, there's a sort of a, a range of gear sort of in which um, we'll introduce you to, I guess. Some of it is essential, some of it's optional, and some of it's just, um, you know, uh, fripperies that you might want to add just because they're kind of cool. Um, the bare minimum, I guess, for any of this malarkey is a phone of some sort. Um, we've got the two phones that I mentioned before. Um, the next best thing, I guess, that you're going to need for manipulating stuff is, is all of the standard kit for the National Water Bug Blitz. So, you know, spoons for shifting bugs around, pipettes for the smaller bugs, um, an ice cube tray to put things in. Um, when we're actually photographing things, we'll probably switch a bit between sometimes having the animals in a white ice cube tray, which gives you a nice white background, which gives you a good high contrast photo because you've got a lovely white background. Then if you want to get sort of pictures of animals which have sort of more natural colors and stuff, you might transfer them to the um, these sort of transparentish spoons and then pop them on a, a background of the, you know, a color that you like. We'll probably just pop them on this gray concrete, but that um, neutral backgrounds will give you better colors in the animals that you're dealing with. Um, Beyond that, that's probably all the kit you need in the absolutely essential category. The other things we'll be using are these two things, which are available through the Waterbug shop, um, and they make life just that little bit easier when it comes to macro photography. The first of these is these little baby octopus things, which are a tripod. Um, this is a sort of a clip that um, accepts the phone, and then with the three bendy legs, you sort of can arrange the thing so that it sets up around your subject. Um, and that allows you to sort of um, have your hands free to manipulate the animal um, into the spot that you need to take the photo. And um, it just makes the whole process just that little bit easier. If you have one of the older phones that doesn't have like millions and billions of pixels to play with, um, so say you're playing with something like this Nokia One, um, something that can soup your camera up a little bit, and it'll do two things actually. It'll, it'll give you a shorter or a closer focusing distance, and also give you slightly better magnification. So you don't have to zoom in with the digital um, zoom on the, 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 uh, the camera app all that much. Um, it's one of these things, which is a, a magnifier or a macro lens for a mobile phone camera. And to, to put these on, you simply, uh, while looking through the lens, line it up with the, uh, the lens of the phone through there, make sure you've lined up. This particular one has a clip. There's all sorts of other ones out there. We've tested heaps of them and these turned out to be sort of the easiest ones uh, to use and also some of the, the most consistently awesome in the results that they put out. Often if you buy these things off eBay they might be cheaper. You might end up with like a you know four dollar one or a three dollar one that you get on eBay but um, when they turn out there'll be tiny little bits of glass that distort things horribly. So the cool thing about these is it's quite a large bit of glass, lets a lot of light in, um, it's quite an easy way of attaching them and um, yeah after lots and lots of um, experimenting with endless versions of these this is probably the one that we're happiest with. 
The other, if you do want to go and find your own um, by shopping around a little bit, one of the things to bear in mind, I guess, is to run with um, uh, sort of lower magnification. Anything over about 20 times mag is probably um, wasting your money because you'll be up far too close with the animals and um, they're quite difficult to focus at that magnification. And you're not getting a shot of the animal. Generally speaking, you're probably just getting a shot of its leg or it's a single gill, which is something you can do with this as well. But you know, you want the option to be able to pan back a little bit so you can see the whole animal. So that's that. It's a macro lens for a phone. Okay, so now we're just gonna walk you through the basic steps of taking a very simple macro photograph of some bugs that you might have already in a, an ice cube tray. In this ice cube tray cell here, I've got an isostictid damselfly. So the ones with the division in the, um, the, the gill filaments at the end of the tails. I've got a little break in the, in the middle. Um, and what I'm gonna do is set this phone up in the little um, octopus bracket, the um, little tripod, and then um, it's currently in the water bag app, but what I'm going to do for the purposes of this is to pop back out just to the, the native camera app that the phone uses, just to demonstrate that you can use that too. Um, and what we're going to do is zoom in, and with most of these things, the way you focus is you simply tap on the screen at the point where the, the beastie is. Um, when you haven't got uh, one of these macro lenses on them, generally what happens with a phone is that it, it can't, can't focus as close as it needs to. Once you've got the macro lens on like this one, you'll need to get the, the phone a little bit closer to the subject matter. Um, and that's what I've got going on there. And what I might do is flip the whole thing right around so you can see at the same time what I'm doing. So hopefully that gives you a bit of a look at the animal I'm looking at. You can see I was focused in there. This is the isostictid, which is quite a cool little animal. Just moving around the ice cube tray slowly. The cool thing about slow moving things is you can position them quite nicely. With ice cube trays, because they're square and the animal, if it is moving, will come round again. Sometimes it's worth just focusing on a spot and waiting for them to come past. And then when they're in screen, just take yourself a photo. The same procedure with an iPhone, an iPhone 5S in this instance, um, just using the camera app. With most of these cameras, the one big problem that you have is that the camera itself cannot focus if you are too close to the subject matter. So you'll notice with this particular one, we've had to stand the camera, sorry, pull the, pull the phone back a bit from the subject matter. Um, and what that does is it means you end up with quite a small um, animal in the middle of the frame there. Um, that's not an issue though, because the zoom on these things is actually quite, um, quite generous. And so you can zoom in like that and take a shot and you can see that that's still quite a lovely picture of a, not, a, not an enormous animal, um, and it's doing a really quite a good job of it. We can reframe things a little bit like that, zoom in. And you know, the magnification with this is sufficient that I can see all the characters I need to key it out. And, um, you know, a whole bunch of other stuff besides. This particular setup is an Android camera using an app called Open Camera, which is particularly good for taking macro stuff because it allows you to do a number of different things. One is that you can, you can zoom quite a lot with it, um, but you can also um, manipulate the camera um, and, and control whether or not the little light at the front is on or off. So by turning the light on, you can get that little bit of extra light onto the subject matter, which can be really handy if you're working in a shady spot. It just makes it that little bit easier to focus, and also it brings out you know, some of the details in your animal. So with this one here, hopefully you can see, I've got a, a river caterpillar in here, and with this particular app and this amount of zoom, you can see all sorts of wonderful characters on it, like the, the filamentous sort of gills that are all over the abdomen there. And um, just before we rolled over and we got a good look at the crotchets in the, um, the hind pro legs, which was quite cool. You can see the, the head there. Um, one of the issues that we find with these little tripods and macro photography in general is sometimes that when you're pressing the button, you actually shake the camera a little bit. To get around that, one of the things you can do is turn on the uh, timer. So in this particular second instance, I can have a, a one second timer, which is quite cool. That gives us just a little bit of time for the camera to stop shaking after I've touched it. So with that, you'd sort of set your beastie up so that you know he's gonna be roughly in frame one second from now. 
and then the shakes on the camera have stopped and you get a fairly still um, camera while it takes the picture. That's um, that's sort of all there is to it really. Um, the app being used here is Open Camera um, and once you've got it installed on your phone um, you can actually associate it with the Waterbug app as well which is kind of cool so it'll be the app that you use inside the Waterbug app to take the photos that are used for the um, identification verification stuff. One of the other cool things that we have happening here is um, there's a the spoon that we're using um, which you can see here let's pull it out um, is a flat bottomed spoon that means it doesn't tip over while we're um, uh, maneuvering around it and uh, it just makes it that much easier to manipulate animals so because it's got the long handle I can shift the animal around um, without having to move the camera yeah, that was quite cool you can see all the pro legs then so if you guys can see that got the one second working With the other secret, I guess, to macro photography is strafing. So if you do like hundreds of shots, one of them's got to be good, right? 